Welcome back to another episode of Great Northern Exotic. I'm in the greenhouse and I'm going to take a look at my cactus collection after just one year of collecting. Let's get straight into the video. Well, it's almost a year to the day since I joined the British Cactus and Succulent Society, the BCSS, um, and I've been collecting, yeah, just in that time, about a year, and I've been refining the kind of um, cacti I want to collect, the kind of succulents I'm interested in. So I thought towards the end of September, towards the end of the growing season, I'd give you a little overview of what my collection comprises of currently. One genus of cacti that I'm particularly interested in is Copiapoa, the slow growing Chilean Copiapoa. And this is undoubtedly uh, the jewel in my collection, this Copiapoa. Cinerea. Just look at the black spines and the colour of the dermis on there. This one brings me a lot of joy just to look at. It's offsetting. Wouldn't really like to guess an age of that, but if you are a Copiapoa grower, do let me know what you think about for the age. It is grafted, it's on grafting stock underneath. So I'll be interested in your thoughts. Now this multi-headed Copiapoa Coquimbana is another one I've picked up at auction. It's got 20 heads on it, heavily offsetting. Lovely colour on that one as well. And I've got that one. And I think that bowl is 25 centimetres diameter bowl. Really love that one. And then my other big Copiapoa is this Hazeltoniana. It has got a little bit of a, it's, be, it's a little bit beaten up and worse for wear, but I kind of like, like the look and it is such a pale. I mean, look at the colour of, of it, it's just fantastic. And then the fluff on top, just a fantastic looking cactus. I've got various smaller Copiapoa here, and then I've got a few others as well. Let me show you some of them in more detail. So this one I picked up uh, on the sales table of an, a recent auction. Um, and there's two labels on it. I don't know which one to believe. There's the original nursery label there, Copiapoa cinerea tenebrosa. Uh, and then the grower who grew it before me has it labeled as a Copiapoa aramophila. Excuse my pronunciation. However, I have this plant here that I bought from Southfield Nursery, another well-known uh, grower of Copiapoa, amongst other cacti. And this one was labelled Aramophila as well. So, I mean, look at the variation there. At least one of those labels is wrong. But who cares? I mean, look at the, look at the purple of that. I am open to uh, suggestions in the comments if you want to suggest any... Corrections for my labels. I've just gone with what they were labelled as they came with. I'm no expert. I've got a multi headed Copiapoa longistaminia. Streptocolon, Copiapoa streptocolon, another purpley looking cacti. Now this is an interesting one, I've not seen any others like this online. This is a variegated um, Copiapoa Poggia. The lizard skin Copiapoa, doesn't look very lizard-like to me. Um, yeah, never seen it before. Here's a Copiapoa Carizalensis with longer spines, black spines. Again, I love any sort of black spined Copiapoa. Piques my interest. This one's another big favourite. Copiapoa marginata. Now this was listed as a, a Copiapoa cranesiana hybrid species. Um, evidence of flowering when I bought it from the nursery, but it hasn't flowered for me. Not a huge fan of Cranesiana, but an interesting looking specimen. Then we've got the 
Atacomensis. I think this is an underrated species of Copiapoa. <laughs> A little bit of uh, cobweb on there. And then here's a Copiapoa valenariensis, valenariensis. And this sort of marks on the side there, that was there when I bought it. I, I don't know if it's been overwatered in its previous life. Interesting looking spines on that one. Do let me know what you think in the comments if you are a Copiapoa grower. Or the other Copiapoa that I've got that I've not mentioned is this one. Again, bought it at a, on the sales table of a recent cactus auction. It is listed as a Cineria crossed with a Cranesiana. And the final one is this uh, Humilis here. So that's my current Copia Power collection. I would like to get more in the future, but of course uh, prices are going up, so I'm keeping my eye out for bargains. I would like to get more Cineria, um, Deal Barter, you know, the usual ones that people like. Here's my Lofofora Williamsi. With my attempt at staging, try to make it look like a little slice of habitat. Um, it flowered for me. I think there's a little bit of uh, slug damage there, which is annoying. I'll have to hunt out the slug. Um, but it flowered for me. Um, like four or five times this year did really well I've collected the seeds so we'll see what I can do with that but um, I do like these but they are expensive they're becoming more expensive now so again if I can find a bargain I'll, I'll add to the collection but I'll, I don't want to pay over the odds I've got a couple of astrophytums I've got this astrophytum capricorn with a huge spines on it interesting Cactus there, and then I've got this uh, Astrophytum myriostigma that I picked up from a local garden centre. Um, I think this is a definitely something I'd like to add to it. I do like the uh, Astrophytum, and they're not so expensive uh, compared to other, uh, other varieties of cactus. So, no flowers from either of these yet, but we'll see how it goes. Now I am looking at different types of uh, euphorbia and this is uh, the most interesting one I've picked up so far. It's a cross between a Bupleriflorifolia and a Susanna. It's also known as a euphorbia japonica. A really interesting form, does offset readily and I'm uh, growing a little one there. But yeah, really interesting plant and um, I'm not sure about the care tips for this one but if anyone grows one of these or anything similar do let me know what you think because i do have a feeling this needs to be watered more regularly than a lot of my other uh cacti and succulents a couple of lithops there not a huge fan of lip lithops lithops should i say uh but my children like them maybe i'll make a, a bowl of them at some point for them uh, we've got a few areocarpus it's another cactus that is really hard to get hold of uh, without breaking the bank but I've got a retusus here and then I've got a couple of other types of retusus, retusus fervoraceus robustus apparently this one small plant and then I've got another one here for, for, for apologies for my pronunciation areocarpus retusus fervoraceus possibly and then I've got a little agavoides here it's not looking too great at the minute, but um, yeah, I'm not. I've only watered it a couple of times. I don't want to risk it. But there we go. I mean, to be fair, that's not really going to size up very quickly. Anyway, they don't grow that quickly to the Areocarpa, so we'll see about that one. I would like to add some more to my collection soon, hopefully. The other big part of my collection is. Uh, I've got a small and growing collection of um, agave. Now, a lot of these agave I would like to have outside eventually. Now, this one was sold as a 
Titanota, Titanota. But um, a few people on Instagram have suggested it's not something different. But very interesting one with the teeth there. Um, that one won't be going outside. But I have a few that will be going outside, such as this Gentry Eye. I've got a couple of Agave Parry Eye. And there, this is a Agave Parry Eye Neo Mexicana. I really like the, the leaves on that. It's more of a truncated version of the Parry Eye. Um, and then I've got a Montana here. Now, this Montana, and then I've got this one. This is the Agave, uh, agave of Artifolia. These two are going to be the centerpieces of my outdoor arid bed. Um, keep an eye out for an upcoming video on that bed in the next few weeks because I'm going to build a shelter. But um, in the long term, these will both go in the ground and will size up very quickly. But I think they're slightly too small to really have an impact, and I don't want to risk um, them dying off because they're too young. So that's my collection as of the end of September 2023. Do consider subscribing and following for more and similar content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.